Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Breaking news overnight, a convicted murderer and prison escapee who killed a family of five is shot dead by law enforcement just south of San Antonio. Details coming up. And taking a look outside with the live can starting human again at 78 degrees and we are getting closer to those triple digits. And we begin with that breaking news overnight. Convicted murderer on the run since escaping in a Texas prison bus after stabbing its driver last month was shot dead by law enforcement in Jurdenton late last night. A spokesman for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice says 46 year old Gonzalo Lopez was killed around 1030 last night. Now that's after authorities say Lopez killed a family of five and stole their truck from a rural weekend cabin in Centerville in Leon County, north of Houston yesterday. Well, late last night, the Atascosa County Sheriff says his office received new information about the escapee. The state provided new info about the vehicle stolen in Centerville yesterday. A short time later, the Sheriff's Office received additional information that Lopez was in San Antonio. So the Sheriff deployed law enforcement along all major highways. That's when the stolen pickup was spotted about six miles north of Poteet on Highway 16. He followed it, and so he could get additional assistance. And he actually followed it to almost in here to Jordanton, uh, at which time Jordanton Police Department uh, spiked the vehicle, uh, flattening all four tires. Uh, the vehicle uh, turned on the spur up here and then went out into a field. It got back on Highway 16 and where officers were in pursuit of it, heading south. The suspect stuck a rifle out of the window of the truck and fired several shots. He turned on this street here, which is Cypress. He went down there and struck a telephone pole and bounced off of that telephone pole, went down the road a little bit further, crashed into another telephone pole and a fence. He exited his truck. He, he fired additional rounds. Uh, at least four officers returned fire uh, at the suspect. Uh, there were several shots fired. Uh, no officers were injured and a suspect is deceased. And Lopez was serving a life prison sentence for a 2006 conviction in the murder of a man along the Texas-Mexico border. We're going to have more on this developing story coming up in our next half hour. Let's check in now with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. We've made it to Friday on a short work week. Yes, indeed. And, you know, it's actually, it's still humid, but better this morning. I noticed A little that. bit of a break and, uh, yeah, get ready for the heat because, yeah, it's going to be hot. We had a couple of showers and thunderstorms pop up yesterday afternoon. That's going to be the situation again. We have this kind of a weak front sort of lying across the area and just to the south of the area. And that's why now temperatures are still very high, but these numbers... We well only Pleasanton is at 71 right now for dew point temperature, but everybody else is down in the mid 60s. So these numbers are down a good four or five degrees compared to this time yesterday. Yeah, still you look at the scale on the muggy side, but much more comfortable than yesterday. Now that front that's been lying across the area. First of all, mold is on the moderate side. That's going to sort of move back up through the area. And so that's going to give us a chance for uh, just one or two of those showers, a couple of thunderstorms to pop up later on this afternoon and then in toward dinner time. Then it looks like we might have another small chance uh, in the overnight hours early tomorrow morning. Then after that, yeah, the broiler is going to get cranked up. We are going to be at 95 today. That's where we were yesterday, so not that much above normal. But we are looking at, uh, well, we're going to be flirting with a whole bunch of record high temperatures through all of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. I'm absolutely blessed, you know, that it, it, it could always be worse from the time the engine quit to the time that I was on the ground was probably literally less than a minute. And we are hearing from the pilot who made a crash landing in Medina County yesterday. William Fahey walked away from this and that's a plane with its wheels up near FM 211 and Culebra Road. He only had two scratches, one on his arm, the other on his leg. He says he was test flying what he called a small handmade experimental plane when his engine failed. Flight was going fine. Engine temps, gearbox temps, everything was good. Um, I got out towards San Geronimo, made a right turn to head towards Castorville, and the engine just quit. They, he says he's flown the plane before without issues. He got its pilot's license back in 1980 and picked up flying again in 2019 and has been actively flying since. He adds he's never experienced an engine failure before. After the FAA investigation, he plans to fix the plane and get back in the air. 
Now to President Joe Biden addressing a nation scarred by gun violence. Biden is outlining the steps he believes Congress needs to take to address mass shootings in America. CNN's Meredith Wood has the latest. There are too many other schools, too many other everyday places that have become killing fields, battlefields here in America. As Americans struggle to grasp a lethal wave of mass shootings that are traumatizing communities and tearing lives apart. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Charleston, after Orlando, after Las Vegas, after Parkland, nothing has been done. President Biden is calling out Congress to come together and work on bipartisan gun reform laws. This is not about taking away anyone's guns. It's about vil not about vilifying gun, o gun owners. In fact, we believe we should be treating responsible gun owners as an example of how every gun owner should behave. The president laying out actions he believes need to be taken. And if we can't ban assault weapons, then we should raise the age to purchase them from 18 to 21. Strengthen background checks, enact safe storage law and red flag laws. Repeal the immunity that protects gun manufacturers from liability. Address the mental health crisis. Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell says he's hopeful and optimistic lawmakers can compromise on legislation to address mass shootings, to have ready to unveil when the Senate returns to session next week. Mental, mental illness and school safety are what we need to target. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. U.S. military has conducted cyber operations in support of Ukraine as it defends itself against Russia's invasion. The head of U.S. Cyber Command, the military hacking unit, confirmed the news in a published interview. It's a rare public acknowledgement since hacking operations are often shrouded in secrecy. Officials have long warned that Russia may launch cyber attacks against the United States in retaliation for those sweeping sanctions on the Kremlin over its war in Ukraine. The White House predicts the youngest Americans could have access to COVID-19 vaccines this month. The Biden administration says vaccine doses for children under the age of five could be made available as soon as June 21st. Vaccine advisors for the FDA still have to review data from Pfizer and Moderna on their doses. The agency will then decide whether the vaccines should get emergency use authorization. And even if everything goes as planned, they said it will take some time for vaccines to be more widely available. Businesses across the U.S. keep hiring employees despite higher costs and a potential recession. The closely watched monthly employment report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics is due to be released later this morning. Economists expect the report to say some 350,000 jobs were added last month with an unemployment rate of 3.5 percent. That would be a new pandemic era low. The labor market has nearly recovered to its pre-pandemic strengths with just it with with the U.S. just 1.2 million jobs short of where it was before the pandemic shutdowns began. And time now is 438 and 78 degrees for now. Lots of big plays in game one of the NBA Finals between the Celtics and the Warriors last night. Highlights are coming up. And a quick look at the roads, the trans guide looking out there at Highway 281 and Jones Mossberger. Things are moving right now at this hour. And live cam, it's uh, very warm out there. My car thermometer said it was 80 degrees on Highway 281 coming in this morning. 78 out at the uh, thermometer at the airport, and that's the official one. Talk to Mike about your weekend forecasts around the corner. Game one of the NBA Finals last night in San Francisco for the first time in the city's history. This is the Warriors' sixth finals in eight years, while the Celtics have zero players with finals experience. Steph Curry coming out like a man possessed, hitting not one, not two, not three, but six threes in the first quarter alone. Curry holds the record for the most threes in a finals game with nine, but the Warriors were only up four going into the second, and that lead would grow to 10 before the Celtics go on a 10-0 run, capped off by Jalen Brown's jumper to tie the game at 47. Al Horford connects on a three to help the Celtics to a 56-54 lead at the break. All right, second half, Warriors start to pull away in the third. Curry driving goes behind the uh, and finishes in the lane with a finger roll. Jordan Poole pulls up from downtown, and the Warriors 
on a 12-2 run. Warriors are going to go up by 12 in the fourth. Boston responds going on their own 12-2 run to cut the lead down to two. Former Spur Derek White hits back-to-back -back threes to tie the game at 103. And that lights a fire under Boston. Al Horford with back-to-back -back threes. Then Marcus Smart with a pair of threes. Part of a 22 Celtics run to put Boston up by 14. Celtics outscore the Warriors 40-16 to in the fourth. Horford with 26. Derek White 21. Boston steals game one. 120 to 108. One heck of a game. Game two, the NBA Finals, Sunday night, 7 o'clock, so a little bit earlier tip. You can watch it live right here on KSAT 12. Now to Missions Baseball, or we could call them Chanclas Baseball. The Missions coming into the game on a two-game win streak against the Tulsa Drillers last night. San Antonio got two runs in the first, three in the third to take an early lead. Drillers would try to make a comeback, but Missions win 6-5 extending their win streak to three. The series continues out there tonight. Good luck to missions. Uh, time now, 443 and 78 degrees for now. Coming up next, Johnny Depp makes his first public appearance since his court victory against Amber Heard. We do find that the jury's verdict is unanimous. In this morning's GMA first look, Johnny Depp with his first public appearance since his court victory. Meanwhile, Amber Heard's lawyer speaking out to our Lindsay Davis on ABC News Live Prime. She's heartbroken, but I have to say one of the most significant things she said right after she heard the verdict was, I am so sorry for all these women I have disappointed, all these women who have suffered, you know, and I've set them back. Obviously, this is a big setback, and she feels personally responsible for it, so she's... Working through it, but it's a tough one. Now, after this very public trial, where exactly do Johnny Depp and Amber Heard go from here? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Trevor Alt, ABC News, New York. Well, whether you're headed to the pool, the beach, or just outdoors, it's super important to protect yourself from the sun's damaging rays. However, which one works the best? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has the newest test results. What's the best sunscreen? Dermatologists say it's the one you'll actually use. Still, some do protect better than others, and prices vary a lot. So Consumer Reports put several to the test. We test sunscreens to see how well they protect against two types of UV rays. UVA, which causes aging and skin cancer, and UVB, which causes sunburn. They dabbed on the sunscreen and volunteers soaked in tubs to test water resistance. Then they were exposed to simulated sunlight. Next day, they were checked for redness. This sunscreen is a Consumer Reports Best Buy, Equate Ultra Lotion SPF 50 from Walmart. It protected well and costs $5. If the scent, feel, and appearance matters to you. In our tests, we found several sunscreens that absorb quickly into skin and leave little to no residue on people of a variety of skin tones. Most volunteers liked Alba Botanica Hawaiian Coconut Clear Spray SPF 50. It tested well overall, too, and cost $9.50. If you're concerned about benzene contamination after several recalls of some aerosols, Consumer Reports also looked for benzene in all of the aerosol sunscreens it tested. Good news? All tested negative. To check if you have a recalled sunscreen, go to cr.org slash benzene. No matter what sunscreen you use, remember to use it liberally. Most people just don't use enough. Also, for children, lotions are recommended over sprays because they may inhale the fumes. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Things to remember and a look out there with Trans Sky. Things were pretty quiet at last look and looking at Loop 410 at New Braunfels Avenue. Kind of quiet for a Friday. Mike joins us now. First weekend of the month of June. What's the uh, very latest, Mike? Hot. So, hey, uh, back to the sunscreen. Yeah, and also, sir. all the experts say keep reapplying. It's not yes. like you can, it's a one and done type situation throughout the day. Yes, and that's, yeah. that's where some of us mess up, you know, yeah. just to continue it. Yeah. And even though we're not going to have a whole lot of afternoon clouds, uh, even on the cloudiest day, you can get a uh, nasty sunburn. So all the experts say use it just daily. You know, just kind of with the regular daily routine. All right, yesterday, and this, this caption kind of sums it up. You know, for a minute, I thought we were getting some dark clouds. 
and then they moved out and most folks didn't see rain yesterday. That's going to be the situation again today. We will have a couple of showers and thunderstorms out there. A bit more pleasant when you step outside this morning. Uh, we've got our morning clouds hanging around here, but the dew point temperatures, the measure moisture in the atmosphere, they are down uh, three, four, seven degrees lower there in Uvalde. So it is slightly more comfortable compared to where it has been the past couple of mornings. Now, don't get used to it. It's still fairly humid out there. Go upstairs in the atmosphere and we do have some extra moisture around here that's going to help out maybe with a couple of extra clouds in the afternoon as well as hopefully helping out with uh, a couple of showers around here. I put a 10% chance in just if there is a sprinkle that tries to pop up this morning. You know, like the past couple of days, there have been one or two folks I think that have seen sprinkles and that's been about it. We will make it up through the uh, mid upper 70s in the morning hours and then go through the 80s by 10, 11 o'clock. We'll see partly cloudy skies, some sunshine. And then later on this afternoon, we do have the chance for, again, one or two of those showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there. We're going to be at 95 for a high temperature today, which is still four above normal better than a couple of days ago when we got up to 99. We were at 95 again yesterday and it's still a lot better than what's to come. So here's computer model. Got some sunshine midday and then later on about dinner time, late afternoon, a couple of those showers and thunderstorms going to be popping up around here, working their way on through the area into the evening hours. Then once the sun goes down, things are going to settle down. But there's also a couple of models that are trying to pick up one of those big, I call them nighttime storm complexes. They've got that, you know, $5 name to them. And this, uh, if this does indeed develop tonight, this model wants to pick that up and have that coming through tomorrow morning early. Then after that, things do clear on out throughout the day tomorrow. And boy, get ready because he's going to be here and it's going to be sticking around for a while. 88 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today makes it up to 95 and a couple of showers, one or two thunderstorms. Most of us, unfortunately, won't see rain today. Hopefully you're one of the, the lucky ones. Tomorrow, a couple of uh, morning showers or a thunderstorm. We'll have to watch that, especially in the hill country in the overnight hours. And then 99 tomorrow, we're looking at uh, 100 or low hundreds all the way through. Those top numbers are the respective records for those dates. So we are definitely going to be flirting with record high temperatures most all of next week. The $5 storm names, those are those super complicated, super meteorologically based ones. Yeah. Like uh, mesoscale. Mesoscale convective system. Something like something that. Like it, yeah. yeah, which just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Sure. We'll just give them some it's easier to abbreviations. Say nighttime storms. <laughs> yeah. But now in inflation, that's up to $10. So okay. just so you're aware. 452, about 77 degrees. And Mavericks get to take over or get set to take over the box office for a second weekend. Plus, there are even more shows debuting on streaming. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio at 455. Top Gun Maverick hoping for yet another big weekend at the box office. Well, it is what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Good morning, aviators. This is your captain speaking. At the box office this weekend, expect Top Gun Maverick to soar once again. It'll finish first for a second weekend in a row. But expect it to get knocked out of the top spot next week by Jurassic World Dominion. Let's roll. On the small screen today, Stargirl goes to Hollywood. Disney Plus's Hollywood Stargirl is the sequel to 2020's Stargirl, starring Grace Vanderwall as a talented teen starting over in Tinseltown. And unlike most 18-year-olds who are glued to their phones, Stargirl doesn't have one. Vanderwall telling me that's kind of cool. I relate to her. I'm I'm like never on my phone. It's um, a problem like professionally. Also new, it's the new season of the aerobic 80s dramedy Physical. Star Rose Byrne telling me when season two starts. Sheila is quote unquote in recovery from her eating disorder, but we soon find out, you know, that, that, that that's far from the truth and far from the case. She's just sort of replaced it with other things. Season two of Physical debuts today on Apple TV+. Plus. What up? I'm three. A couple of TV show renewals, HBO ordering more a black lady sketch show. This is a bowling ball and this is a cake netflix going for season two of is it cake question. and happy birthday to anderson cooper the cnn newsman is 55 today while british actress imogen poots is 33 and that's what's happening in hollywood i'm jason athens in abc news los angeles
and time now, 457 and 77 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, it is our big story this morning. Law enforcement down in Jordanton take down a fugitive murderer overnight. We'll have details on all that happens. Plus, more victims of the Uvalde school shooting will be laid to rest today. We're going to have the latest on that investigation. Stephen Cavazos is in the house. We'll have an update on any traffic trouble spots out there as we scan the cameras around town with our friends over at Transguide. You're watching GMSA on a Friday. We'll be back. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Gonzalo Lopez has been captured and is deceased. Breaking overnight, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice announcing the death of a prison escapee and convicted murderer who was shot and killed by police in Jordanton. More details ahead. And on the west side, an 18-year-old is shot several times overnight. We have details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, 77 degrees for now. Things will heat up today and even more so over the weekend. Updating late breaking news overnight. The Texas manhunt for a convicted murderer who escaped from a prison bus last month has ended with his death. That inmate, 46 year old Gonzalo Lopez, was killed late last night in a shootout with law enforcement officers in Jordanton. Katrina Weber is live in Jordanton with that story, and we understand this came on the heels of that suspect allegedly committing yet another shocking crime. It does here. Well, obviously we were having some uh, audio difficulties. Sound like we were trying to get that back, but we're going to get the latest update from Katrina in just a couple of mo moments as soon as we get all the uh, little bugs worked out there. All right, you step outside this morning. It's not quite as humid as what it has been. 78 degrees. I mean, that was about the same as the past couple of days, but then you look at that bottom number, dew points down to 67. We had a weak little front move on through here. Wind is actually out of the, the northeast, and that shaved off a few degrees as far as the dew point temperature. So again, slightly more comfortable when you step outside this morning. 95 for a high temperature later on today. Same where we were yesterday. One or two of those showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there later on. As far as the aquifer did go down another three tenths of a foot, of course, still in stage two water restrictions. Mold is on the moderate side. So take a look at some of these dew point temperatures around the area. You know, yesterday looking at this map, we had all these numbers were well up into the 70s and even higher the previous day. So we did. I mean, we're still above that threshold number of 60 on the muggy side, but it is definitely more comfortable when you shave off about three, four degrees off of those dew point temperatures. That's a lot more comfortable. Still going to give the mention or use the mention of a sprinkler two this morning. That's a possibility. Haven't seen anything out there, but just don't be surprised if there's one or two of them. A couple of showers, even a thunderstorm later on today. So today's going to be like yesterday and the previous day as far as one or two of those storms popping up late afternoon, right around dinner time. And then after a couple of uh, morning showers or thunderstorms, there's the potential for one of those nighttime storm complexes to move into the hill country. So we'll have to keep an eye on that overnight. After that, though, it is going to be hot and it is going to be staying hot. We're looking at a long stretch of triple digit temperatures. All the sweaty details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stevens back. What's going on, sir? Hey, thank you, Mike. I'll have my sunscreen ready. All right, let's get a look at the roadways right now. 35 at Ben Zingelman, 1604 at Pat Booker. The morning starting off pretty nice. As we get a look around town, you can see 1604 at Spurs Ranch. Really liking what I'm seeing out here from these Transguide cameras, and we know you at home are probably going to love it for your early morning drive, but uh, as we are seeing some quiet roads here in town from Transguide, unfortunately, we've already picked up a pretty big issue out in Bernie in the hill country. Now that crash uh, just popped off of our map. I'll put it back on there, but right now TxDOT is reporting a major crash that had State Highway 46 close in both directions near I-10. Now the unfortunate thing here is there are no Transguide cameras in this area, so we're not able to show you those conditions, but we're going to have to keep an eye on it and see how that's going to be impacting the drive time. Right now doesn't look like it's causing too many issues, so let's go ahead and give you a real big bird's eye view of the map here at 504. You can see nothing else to talk about. Just a lot of active construction spots, and we're going to get to that a little bit later on. But for now, the drive here not looking too bad. Green across the board if you're heading in from any of these communities, so no need to rush out the door. That crash in Bernie not really impeding traffic just yet. But again, we'll keep an eye on that. And again, make sure you do the same. We're going to have more updates coming up here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie.
All right, thank you very much, Stephen. All right, now back to that late breaking news. If you're just now joining us, the Texas manhunt for a convicted murderer who escaped from a prison bus last month has ended with his death. Let's go ahead and check in with uh, Katrina Weber, who is live in Jordanton right now. We had you earlier. Uh, I think we have your shot back. Well, that is right, uh, Stephanie. Yeah, that ended with his death here in Jordanton. Now, this comes right after he allegedly committed another shocking crime. Authorities say that he murdered four people, including three children, in a town called Centerville. That's in East Central Texas. And then stole a pickup. Well, that pickup right here behind me, that white one that investigators are going through, they say that is what put deputies and police here on his trail. Now, this neighborhood street where the manhunt ended is about 250. 50 miles away from where this all began. Atascosa County deputies had received an alert about Lopez being in the stolen pickup and possibly in this area. The sheriff said he had deputies watching all the highways and they eventually spotted that truck last night, then followed it. Now, Jordanton police, meanwhile, had put down spike strips and they were able to flatten all of the tires on that truck. From there, the sheriff says things took a violent turn. The suspect stuck a rifle out of the window of the truck and fired several shots. He turned on this street here, which is Cypress. He went down there and struck a telephone pole. And the sheriff says Lopez then got out of the truck, got into a gun battle with those officers, and that is when he was shot and killed. Now, in addition to those four murders that he's accused of committing yesterday, Lopez was already serving time for a capital murder and attempted capital murder in two other counties. Now, he escaped from a prison bus in Centerville May 12th while he was being transported for a medical appointment, and they believe that he then broke into a home in that area where he allegedly killed those four people yesterday. Reporting live in Jordanton, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, glad we got you back, Katrina. Thank you for the update. That'll be our top story all morning. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police say one person is in the hospital after being shot multiple times overnight. This happened in the 2000 block of Rowan Drive near Westshire, just east of 410 on the city's west side. SAPD says the 18-year-old victim was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Police an unknown number of suspects got away in a van or SUV. So far, none of them have been found. And today, Uvalde is remembering more of those lost in the school shooting. A mass service for Jayla Nicole Siguero is scheduled for today at 10 a.m. at Sacred Heart. And services for J.C. Carmelo Luebenos will be at the same time and place today. Jacqueline Casares will also be remembered at a mass at 2 p.m. at Sacred Heart. Several others are having visitation. We have that full schedule listed on our website at KSET.com. Details have changed as the investigation into the shooting develops. State Senator Roland Gutierrez says 911 calls made by children inside Robb Elementary were only sent to Uvalde police and not to Pete Arredondo, the school district police chief and commander on the scene at the time. Arredondo has been criticized for his response that day. Gutierrez says the Commission on State Emergency Communications told him Arredondo did not know about the calls. He called it a system failure on several levels, including with leadership at the legislative level. The mayor of Uvalde has said more mental health resources are needed, but went further this week by saying the gun issue also needs to be addressed. The Girl Scouts honoring one of the victims of the Uvalde school massacre. Ten-year-old Amory Jo Garza died in the shooting after trying to use her phone to call authorities for help. The Girl Scouts have posthumously awarded Garza with a bronze cross, which is given for saving or attempting to save the lives of others in the risk of losing their own. It's one of the highest honors in the organization. In Washington, D.C., President Joe Biden is amplifying his appeal to tighten the country's gun restrictions. ABC's Justin Finch has more. President Biden addressing the nation after weeks of deadly mass shootings. My fellow Americans, enough. Behind the president, 56 candles, one for each U.S. state and territory touched by gun violence. New York State, Texas, and Oklahoma now among the latest. He says those victims' families want what families who suffered before them still want. For God's sake, do something. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Charleston, after Orlando, after Las Vegas, after Parkland, nothing has been done. This time that can't be true.
The president again calling for a ban on assault weapons and high capacity magazines and also pushing for passing enhanced background checks along with red flag and safe storage laws. This isn't about taking away anyone's rights. It's about protecting children. It's about protecting families. On Capitol Hill, a House committee approving a bill that would raise the age limit to 21 to buy semi-automatic rifles and tighten regulation of so-called ghost guns and bump stocks. There are 18 eyes and 24 no's. Democrats and Republicans argued bitterly over their proposals for nearly 10 hours, with all Republicans on the committee voting no. I know that phone call. Parents across the country know that phone call. It's a sucker punch. It's a one-size-fits-all approach that punishes law-abiding citizens. That bill is up for a full vote in the House next week, but has little chance of passing in the Senate. On the Senate side, bipartisan talks continue with momentum growing on policies that could earn support from both parties, though details are limited. As those talks continue, three students from that Texas school shooting are being laid to rest today. And in New York State, 10 new gun measures passed, including one raising the purchase age to 21 for AR-15 style rifles. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 510, about 77 degrees. And still ahead, Instagram introducing some new features in an effort to take on TikTok. Outside with live cam, the weekend is almost here, and Mike will tell us how much hotter it's going to get as we head into Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have some fun news this morning. An eighth grader from right here in San Antonio has won the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Harini Logan won in the B's first ever lightning round tiebreaker, so both spellers got four words wrong during their grueling showdown before Scripps went to the 90-second spell-off. Harini was faster and sharper throughout, spelling 21 words correctly to take the win. And she will be bringing home a trophy and more than $50,000 in cash and prizes. Congratulations. 514, about 77 degrees. And still ahead, how AT&T is upgrading its drones to help bring connectivity to areas affected by disasters. Why hide your skin? If Dupixent has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixent, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent, a breakthrough eczema treatment. Today's Tech Bytes Instagram Reels are getting new editing features in an effort to keep up with TikTok. Meta is allowing longer Reels, up to 90 seconds. Users will be able to import their own audio and they'll have the ability to push videos into Facebook feeds. AT&T is upgrading its flying cows. No, they're not animals. That's shorthand for flying cell on wings. The drones are used to bring 5G into disaster areas. The upgrades will increase the chance users will receive important messages when regular mobile networks fail. And EA Sports is out with a new preview for NFL Madden 23. The new video game will feature three different covers of legendary football Hall of Famer John Madden. From his stints as a coach, broadcaster, and video game icon, the trailer debuts today on YouTube. The game is due out in August. What a way to kick off the release. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Friday morning, 519. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos at last look. It looks like things are OK out there on the roadways. People are ready to drive off into the weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it has been a long week. And thankfully, if you have to head out the door right now, you can enjoy the drive to work, whatever your destination or wherever your destination is. You can see 35 at South Cross. Traffic is getting moving. I-35 at Ben Zingelman looking a little bit busier out there from this shot at Transguide. But thankfully, we are just seeing light traffic. The morning is still young, but things will pick up a little bit later on. But right now, we 
can enjoy what we're seeing. Some pavement and lots of green on the screen. But as I mentioned a little bit earlier, one of the things that we constantly see each and every morning are those construction spots. You can see right there on our map. Now, one thing that drivers should plan for is what's going to be taking place here along I-10 and the east side of San Antonio. Some bridge work. Now, uh, this will start later tonight, according to TxDOT. Should be wrapping up on, uh, pardon me, that should say June 4th. Yeah, Saturday, June 4th. I need to get my eyes checked. Uh, from 8 in the evening to 11 in the morning is when we can expect that work to continue, but we all know that will be continuous for some time. But right now, drivers can expect a full main lane closure in both directions right there at FM 1518. Of course, that information, along with other construction spots, is posted on our website at ksat.com slash traffic. Just make sure to scroll down to the bottom of the page. Guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's a pretty picture. Pretty you. beautiful picture and kind of the, the hardest thing to see in that picture is you can see mm -hmm. right up there that little waxing crescent of a moon. Of course, it's going to be at the uh, first quarter on the 7th and then it's going to be full on the 14th. Hey, hey Mike, uh, so I know summer doesn't start till the 20. First, yeah, so it's still almost three. I got away. my first big sign yesterday that summer's coming other than the heat. But I heard the cicadas start chirping oh, yesterday. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Love yeah. that. <laughs> welcome yeah. summer. That's all, yeah, welcome, welcome to summer out there. So we've got some clouds hanging around here this morning. Good news is now temperatures are about where they've been the past couple of mornings. We're anywhere from five, almost 10 degrees above average. Uh, normal low, average low is 71 in town. We're at 78. However, these numbers are much lower. We had that weak front sort of slide through the area. I've got a slight breeze out of the northeast, so some dry Higher air, these uh, dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere. They're down about uh, three, four, five degrees compared to this time yesterday. So you walk outside, it's just not like a, a damp towel on top of you. It's just humid, not extra humid. It will stay in the uh, mid and upper 70s through the rest of the morning. Got a 10% chance, maybe a little sprinkle out there. Just uh, don't be surprised if there is one. We'll make it in through the mid to upper 80s then at noon and partly cloudy skies. Then later on this afternoon, we are going to see one or two of those showers and thunderstorms popping up like we saw yesterday. And most folks won't get any rain, but if you do, could have a you know decent downpour here or there. And that's going to be through the early evening hours and then may actually have some more overnight into tomorrow morning. Here's computer model. I think this does a great job picking what's going to be happening late afternoon. Couple of those showers and thunderstorms scattered about here and they'll last in through the early evening hours up until right around uh, about the sunsets or so. And then those will continue to die down. Maybe a couple of little stragglers here and there. And then what we're going to be watching is one of those nighttime systems. This computer model wants to get one going up there northwest of the hill country. Move on in here in the wee hours overnight tomorrow morning. And then that, once the sun comes up, starts to die down somewhat, but uh, may actually have some of those showers and thunderstorms in portions of the hill country tomorrow morning. We'll have to be on the lookout for that. But then that comes to an end, and we are going to then have the blazing hot temperatures in the afternoon. Quick check of the tropics. We've been watching the disturbance, the leftovers of Agatha from the Pacific. It is this low right here, and Hurricane Center is now looking at it becoming a tropical storm. It would be Alex. It's really nothing right now, just a low uh, right off the Yucatan Peninsula, but it would cut across Florida over the next couple of days, be a big rain producer there and go off to the northeast. And again, if it does indeed develop, which all indications are that it will, it would be Tropical Storm Alex. 88 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today makes it up to 95. Couple of showers, couple of thunderstorms scattered about the area late afternoon going into the uh, early evening hours. Then we'll have to be on the lookout for some of those in the hill country overnight early tomorrow morning. After that, 99 tomorrow, triple digits Sunday in through, well, pretty much all of next week. And all those numbers are going to be within a degree or two, flirting with record high temperatures, really starting tomorrow through much of next week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to if you're going to be that hot, might as well mm -hmm. be up close to record, right? Yeah, sure. But maybe hopefully a, a, a break sometime after that. A little one, maybe. Okay. Go for broke. <laughs> 524, 77 degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, a first look at a real life Mario Kart ride and a fresh take on a classic Rolling Stones gig. Just about 527, Super Mario gets an interactive ride, plus a special release by the Rolling Stones. CNN's David Daniel looks at what's happening in movies, music, and theme parks in today's Hollywood Minute. I'm never stop until I 
I'm holding it. You're still beating hot. This is no damsel in distress. Here's Joey King in the first trailer for The Princess, determined to save her family and carve a bloody swath through the patriarchy. The Princess hits Hulu July 1st. Mario Kart breaks out of the video game. Universal Studios Hollywood has unveiled this sneak peek of Bowser's Challenge, which it's calling one of the largest, most interactive rides ever. It's set to debut in Super Nintendo World at the California theme park early next year. A special Stones gig at the Garden. Rolling Stones Licked Live in NYC is fully restored and remastered from the original 2003 release, including Gimme Shelter and three other previously unreleased performances. It's due out in DVD and CD, Blu-ray and CD, and CD and LP packages on June 10th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 528, 77 degrees. And still ahead, we're going to get an update on the escaped inmate who was shot and killed last night by police after he killed a family of five. And today marks the 100th day since the start of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. What Ukraine's president is now saying about the support given by the United States. Plus how General Motors is on track to have the cheapest electric vehicle in the U.S. market. The manhunt across Texas for an escaped murderer ends here in Jordanton with that inmate's death. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have the latest. It's been 100 days since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began. What Ukraine's president is saying about the U.S. response to the crisis. Taking a look outside with live cam, 77 degrees for now, but we are bracing for that heat. It is a busy news morning. An escaped inmate who was the subject of a statewide manhunt has died in a shootout with law enforcement officers down in Jordanton. 46-year-old Gonzalo Lopez, who already was serving a life sentence for capital murder, is accused of committing four other murders shortly before he died. Katrina Weber is live in Jordanton with that story. It's about 250 miles from where this all started. Katrina, how did he end up there? Well, good morning, Stephanie. Yeah, that timeline's still being put together right now by investigators, but we do know that that uh, chase, that uh, not rather not the chase, but the manhunt did end here uh, in a pickup that was stolen. That stolen pickup was right back here in this neighborhood, and uh, authorities just towed it away a few minutes ago, but they're still in this area uh, investigating and collecting evidence as well. Now, we can tell you that... Uh, what happened is the sheriff here in Atascosa County says that they had received word that Lopez, who had been on the run since May 12th, might be in the area in that stolen truck. He says deputies were watching the highways and spotted the truck. They began to follow Lopez. And when he reached the Jordanton city limits, he ran over spike strips that officers had put down. The sheriff says that's when Lopez pointed a rifle out of the window of that truck and began shooting at them then crashed into a telephone pole in this neighborhood. Apparently we don't have that sound, but what, what happened is he did uh, come out of his truck firing additional rounds according to the sheriff and then four officers returned fire at the suspect and he was hit and killed, no officers hurt. Well, investigators believe at some point before all of this happened here, Lopez had murdered four other people, including three children. Their bodies were found in a home in uh, the town of Centerville in East Central Texas. They believe that he broke into that home, killed those people, and then stole the pickup, which he drove here. Now, Lopez was already serving a life sentence for capital murder and attempted capital murder in two other counties. Now, of course, they say that he did murder those four people. He escaped from a prison bus back on May 12th as he was being transported to a medical appointment. Reporting live in Georgia, Tim Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. We'll keep you updated all morning long, obviously. All right, step outside and looks wise about the same as what we've had yesterday. Temperature wise about the same as yesterday, but that number dew point measure moisture in the atmosphere. That's somewhat different. It's down about 
three, four, five degrees compared to this time the past few mornings. Also, we've got a slight breeze instead of out of the southeast, the northeast. We had that weak front move on through here, and so that has brought in slightly drier air. We'll take anything we can get as far as the humidity is concerned. Mold is moderate. The updated count is going to be coming out in a couple of hours or so. And throughout the day, we are going to make it up to 94, 3 o'clock, 95 for a high temperature today. A sprinkle is possible this morning. Not very likely, though. I haven't seen any reports of anything. And then later on this afternoon, we are going to be seeing a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms popping up like we've seen the past few days. Most of us, unfortunately, won't see any rain. Now, there's another chance in the overnight hours, especially in portions of the hill country. And then after that, that's it. All bets are off as far as rain is concerned, but a pretty good bet. We're going to be seeing some really hot temperatures. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on? Hey, Mike. Thankfully, not a whole lot out there. Let's get a look around Trans Guide 1604 at Spurs Ranch. You can see almost like a ghost road there, but we have one vehicle making their way by at 410 at New Braunfels. You will have the roads to yourself right now, but keep in mind there are a few vehicles. Uh, people getting their morning going, so just remember to move over, slow down, uh, give yourself plenty of time as well. So let's go ahead and start here with that wide look at the map. We talked about a lot of active construction spots, but let's go ahead and bring you in here to I-10 right there off the central side of San Antonio in the east, pardon me, 410 uh, eastbound lanes near Cherry Ridge. We have our first stall that's been reported, so uh, not sure exactly what's causing this car trouble out there, but make sure you check your vehicle before you get out on the roadway. Also, make sure you have plenty of gas and your tires are working properly out there if you plan a long road trip. Uh, right now, if your destination is San Antonio, good news is there's no need to rush to get here, especially if you're traveling in from any of these communities, you can see pretty green from Seguin on I-10 coming in those westbound lanes with 29 minutes at this hour. It's a 22 minute drive time for our friends in Laverdia, and you can enjoy the drive if you're heading in from Floridasville on either 181 or 37. So things are looking OK there and they're looking great here back on Transguide, just getting a little bit busier. Of course, we know people are getting <coughs> ready to drive off into the weekend and we're going to have more updates on what you can expect as far as construction in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you very much, Stephen. Today marks 100 days since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began. So far, Ukraine is holding on and has the support of the United States and NATO. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, in an address Thursday, thanked the U.S. for sending high-mobility artillery rocket systems to his country, saying they will, quote, help save the lives of our people and protect our land. President Biden's goal, the whole U.S. government's goal, Congress's goal is to support Ukraine and help Ukraine uh, ultimately prevail. In addition to weaponry, the Biden administration also announced another round of sanctions against government officials and others close to Russian President Vladimir Putin. The cumulative toll of uh, every measure we have put in place uh, has been extraordinarily uh, biting on the Russian economy. The White House released a statement saying these sanctions are designed to, quote, enhance enforcement and increase pressure on Putin and his enablers. Our goal in all of this is to do everything we can to bring this war to an end, uh, to diminish the violence uh, and to put an end uh, to a conflict that was needless to begin with. Since the start of the war, President Biden has been talking with other world leaders to develop a coordinated response. The United States is leading the efforts uh, to provide support to Ukraine. And uh, uh, NATO allies and the United States are uh, providing an uh, unprecedented level of military support. This is making a difference on the battlefield every day. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Three people are dead in Iowa, including the suspected shooter after an incident outside a church in Ames. The sheriff's office says there's no ongoing threat, no reports of others being hurt. Officials they say they received multiple 911 calls last night. Two people and the male shooter were found dead. The shooting reportedly happened during a church program. Police have not yet determined a motive for the shooting. Dwindling Social Security payments could be less than 15 years away. In their annual report, Social Security and Medicare trustees said Americans will stop getting full Social Security benefits in about 13 years if Congress doesn't act. The combined Social Security trust funds, which help support payouts for the elderly and disabled, are projected to run dry in 2035. The outlook is even worse for Medicare. Its hospital insurance trust fund, known as Medicare Part A, will only be able to pay scheduled benefits until 2028. Medicare will then cover 90% of total benefits. 
Well, this week marks the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Midway, one of the most important naval battles of World War II. Today, the Friends of the National World War II Memorial will commemorate the anniversary with a special ceremony in Washington. It'll include a wreath presentation at the World War II Memorial Specific Arch. The Battle of Midway took place in June of 1942 when the U.S. defeated an attacking fleet of the Imperial Japanese Navy near Midway Atoll. Japan had planned the, to invade the Hawaiian Islands starting at Midway, but the U.S. cracked the mission code. The attack on Midway cost Japan four aircraft carriers and more than 200 planes and pilots in the first clear victory for the U.S. in the Pacific War. And time now, 540 and 77 degrees for now. Another baby formula shipment from Nestle will soon be on its way to the U.S. Inflation is hitting Americans' wallets hard. Up next, we're going to show you a few ways you can boost your savings right now. Outside with Live Cam, the weekend is almost here. Just got to get through today first. Friday forecast is coming up and a look ahead to the upcoming weekend. We're closer to the official start of summer. By 43 inflation, inflation rather is hitting Americans while it's very hard and on top of rises in prices, interest rates for traditional savings accounts remains low. ABC's Rena Roy explains that that can make it hard for your savings to keep up. Inflation is sky high right now. And if you have your money parked in a traditional savings account earning, let's be honest, nothing percent, the fact is you are losing money. CNET Money's Farnoosh Tarabi says the value of how far your dollar can stretch is diminishing as it sits in that plain vanilla savings account. If you had a dollar in a bank account last year and you saved it, and now with inflation hovering over 8%, that dollar is actually worth closer to 92%. Typically, when the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, savings rates also increase. So while we have seen mortgages, personal loans, credit cards increase as far as APR and interest rates, we haven't seen the same sort of upward movement in the savings landscape. Tarabi has a few tips on how you can make the most of your savings right now. Number one, compare interest rates at digital banks. There are a lot of digital competitors right now vying for our savings dollars, and many of them do offer better than average savings rates. Tip number two, look for sign-up bonuses. If you're a new customer, they may offer you a welcome sign-on bonus, giving you an immediate boost to your savings account. Tip number three, if you don't need your savings right away, consider I-bonds. So I-bonds are government-backed securities. They adjust twice a year to mimic where inflation is. And right now, I-bonds are earning well over 9%. When deciding if I-bonds are right for you, keep in mind you can't touch that money for a minimum of one year. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. 545, 77 degrees. And coming up next, more baby formula headed to the U.S. We're going to tell you when Nestle's latest shipment is expected to arrive. And welcome back. It's 547. In your morning consumer headlines, some good news on the baby formula shortage. The FDA says some formula being shipped here from Germany, Germany should be on store shelves over the next two months. And according to the announcement, it's a general formula, including Nestle non-pro Supreme Pro 1 and Nestle non-Supreme Pro 2. There will be about 249,000 cans available in some stores and on Gerber.com. Officials say they will continue to evaluate options to get even more formula to the U.S. as quickly as possible. Ford making changes to how it will sell electric vehicles. They'll no longer be sold at dealerships. Instead, buyers will order online. The price listed will be the sale price and there will be no negotiating. Ford CEO made the announcement earlier this week. And General Motors is cutting the price of its new Chevrolet Bolt and is on track to making it the cheapest electric vehicle on the U.S. market. The 2023 Bolt EV model will sell for $26,595. That is down $6,000 from the 2022 model. The Bolt's new price slightly undercuts the electric Nissan Leaf. GM is also reducing the price of its larger Bolt, the EUV. 
Let's check on traffic at about 10 till 6. Stephen, what's the latest? Hey, good morning, everyone, and special good morning to my niece, Emma, up in Bernie. My sister sent me a photo of her watching GMSA. She's a baby, probably doesn't know what's going on right now, but she's probably enjoying what she's seen. Uh, and if you at home are going to enjoy the roads right now, because right now there's not a lot to talk about. You can see US 90 at Couples. Things are just moving right now without any trouble, but uh, that is just for right now. Let's go ahead and see what we're seeing on the map. Show you right there, 410 eastbound at Cherry Ridge. We still have that stalled vehicle. That's been there a little while, but we're going to add another one to our list right over here off 35 southbound at Riddiman Road. Uh, as a reminder, not sure what's causing these stalled vehicles, but make sure you're checking your car properly before you get out on the roadways. 549, getting a view of that metro area, you can see again, nothing else to talk about, but we know that there will always be those construction spots. And this one off of I-10 on the central side of San Antonio could impact a lot of commuters. Some bridge repairs Sunday, June 5th, up until Tuesday, June 7th. Keep in mind, this will be overnight, so that's some good news. We won't really be seeing a lot of activity during the day, uh, but that should wrap at five in the morning. And during that time, you can expect multiple westbound main lane closures right there at Frio Street. So keep that in mind as we are getting ready to drive off into the weekend. But right now we can enjoy the drive wherever that destination is going to be. Guys, thank you, sir. Very good. Oh, it's a cute little visitor. Yeah, Thank speaking you. speaking of babies, look at a little baby <laughs> raccoon. That's the weirdest looking koala bear I've ever seen. He's <laughs> uh, like posing for the, the photo. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah like pretty much there. so. Or else it's like, okay, what are you doing? Or uh, watch behind you because watch out for mama. <laughs> Hopefully, mama's oh, yeah. not around right. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it says probably looking for a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to be looking for water. And speaking of that, of course, make sure uh, your pets have plenty of it outside and change it often. Don't leave it in the sun or anything where it's going to be heating up watch it on the hot pavement as well not only for pets but yourself all right out there and boy it seems like the lights are extra bright out there by uh, 410 over there by the airport traffic's moving along very well we've got some clouds around here temperatures are very warm we are still uh, well seven degrees above normal here in town 75 Helotus as well as in Converse and Canyon Lake numbers temperatures are about the same but it's the humidity that is down compared to past couple of mornings so it's a bit more comfortable when you step outside there could be a little bit of mist or sprinkle out there. I've just got the slight mention of it. Temperatures will then get into the uh, upper 70s and mid 80s through the morning hours. We'll see some more sunshine thrown on in 88 degrees at noon and then go up in through the mid 90s with top off at 95 degrees. Still four above normal and then one or two of those showers thunderstorms going to be popping up later on this afternoon. Again, like the past couple of days, most of us won't see anything, but at least there will be a little bit of rain. Now, humidity, which is lower this morning, is not going to be outrageously high this afternoon, so that's some good news. So we're not going to have any outrageous uh, heat index values, maybe a degree or two above the actual air temperature. Here's the computer model through the rest of the afternoon. We have some sunshine mixed in with the clouds, and then by late afternoon, dinner time, we start to see a couple of showers, even a couple of thunderstorms popping up, just sort of scattered about the area. And that's going to be the case into the early evening hours. And we'll have to watch out, especially out in the hill country, then overnight, early tomorrow morning. This particular model wants to get a one of those nighttime storm complexes developing out there northwest of the hill country and then working its way on in here just about to say sunrise right before that and should start to die down as soon as the sun starts to come up and we'll have a couple leftover showers in the morning and then we start to clear on out and that's when things definitely start to heat up around here. That high, which is down over Mexico as of right now, is just going to continue to sort of strengthen and build and cover Cover most of the well, really southern half or southern third of the country, and that's going to be going into the middle part of next week. And as this high pretty much stays in place on top of us, pushes down in the atmosphere, keeps things very, very hot. And this is when we're going to be staying all the way through next week in the uh, right around 100 degree range for high temperatures. 88 at noon today, partly cloudy skies, and then high temperature is going to make it up to 95. Four above normal, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there. Most of us won't see any, but if you do get one of those storms, a decent downpour would be very localized, though, and we'll have to watch out for a few of those developing overnight and early tomorrow morning parts of the hill country. Then heats up 99 tomorrow, triple digits Sunday all the way in through well, probably most all of next week. It's looking like Friday as well. Uh, is that your final answer? That's my final answer. <laughs> oh, all those numbers goodness. are pretty close.
to their respective record high temperatures. Okay, so I was going to say, uh, I thought you were going to say close to their respective normals, but that's not no, where no. you were going with that. No, those are about 10 at least above mm. wow. normal high temperature. Okay. We will prepare. Yep. Thank you, Mike. We will prepare. 554, about 77 degrees. Look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3046, Fireball 6, Dilly 4, 3034, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 16, 20, 23, 27, 33. Texas 2 step, 2, 9, 12, 32, and a bonus ball of 3. All right, welcome back. Coming up on GMSA in our next hour, we're taking you to school to raise your brisket game. I'm breaking down what you can learn when you attend classes at Brisket U, as in university. Our great grad series continues this morning. We'll introduce you to one of South Sand's most promising young students. But at the top of next half hour, we have more from Jordanton on that investigation of an escaped inmate out of the Houston area being killed, confronting law enforcement. Our Katrina Weber will be live with the very latest. And it's a Friday. The morning commute is about to begin officially here as we approach the top of the hour. Stephen Cavazos will be tracking things all morning long as we get you ready for the workday and the weekend. Police are searching for multiple suspects after a shooting on the city's southwest side leaves one person in critical condition. What neighbors heard and who found the victim, those details coming up. President Biden addresses the nation in the wake of recent mass shootings around the country of the latest and proposed gun law changes. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill are currently considering. And bracing for those triple digits is not happening today. We are starting at 77 degrees for now. But first up, we begin with late breaking news uh, that's been developing overnight. Escape murderer Gonzalo Lopez dead this morning, killed down near Jordanton after confronting law enforcement officers. That's right. We go ahead and go to Katrina Weber, who is in Jordanton this morning with the very latest. Well, good morning, uh, Stephanie and Mark. Uh, yeah, this area, this neighborhood here, still very much an active crime scene. Now, we've learned that the suspect's body is still here at the scene. A little while ago, they towed away a, tow tr a, a pickup truck that uh, we understand that the suspect has stolen some 250 miles away from here. Now, according to what we've been told, it was that pickup that law enforcement officers spotted, letting them know that convicted murderer and escapee Gonzalo Lopez was in this area. They had received an alert about the possibility earlier. Atascosa County Sheriff says he had deputies watching all the highways, and when they spotted that stolen pickup, they began following it. He says when they reached the Jordanton city limits, Lopez ran over some spike strips, which flattened all his tires. He says Lopez then pointed a rifle out of the window of the truck and fired, then crashed into a telephone pole. He exited his truck. He, he fired additional rounds. Uh, at least four officers returned fire uh, at the suspect. Uh, there were several shots fired. Uh, no officers were injured and the suspect is deceased. Investigators believe at some point before all of this happened here, Lopez murdered four other people, including three children. Their bodies were found yesterday at a home in Centerville in East Central Texas, not far from where Lopez was when he escaped custody. They believe that he broke into that home, killed those people, then stole the truck that he was in when they found him here in Jordanton. Now, Lopez was already serving a life sentence for capital murder and attempted capital murder in two other counties, and he escaped May 12th while he was being transported on a prison bus to a medical appointment. Reporting live in Jordanton, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you for that story, and it remains our top story. Look for more online on KSAT.com and in our, all our later newscasts. Time now, 6.03, and we're only at 77 degrees for now, so it's kind of <laughs> pleasant out there. Hey, can, we, can we hit the pause button yes. right here, Mike? 
Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be? Yes. Yeah, ain't going to happen. Uh, the nice thing, though, this morning, too, is the humidity is down somewhat. So we had this weak little front move on through, and that is brought in. I mean, it's not like it's bone dry air by any stretch, but at least the humidity is down compared to the past couple of days. We still have our morning clouds out here, as you can see, a little bit of a glow as the sun is uh, thinking about rising right now. 77, uh, 75 Converse, low 70s in the hill country. And the dew point temperatures, the measure moisture in the atmosphere, these numbers were all well up into the 70s the past few mornings, and they've been dropping a little bit, but now down in the mid and upper 60s. Still, when you look at the scale, it's on the muggy side, it's above 60. That's the sort of the threshold number, but at least it is down somewhat, so slightly more comfortable. It's not a not a wet towel when you step outside this morning. Mold is on the moderate side. The updated count on that is going to be coming up in about an hour, hour and a half or so. And throughout the rest of the morning, we may fluctuate another couple of degrees here or there. We'll have some sunshine then mixed in later on this morning. As far as any sprinkles this morning, I doubt it you know, mention of it. Then later on this afternoon, first of all, we're going to be up to 88 at noon and we'll make it up to the mid nineties this afternoon. Same thing as we hit yesterday. One or two scattered showers, even a thunderstorm out there. Just kind of a few and far between. Perhaps even a couple of more overnight. We're going to have to keep an eye on a potential system developing overnight. And then after that, yeah, it is just going to be screaming hot for Pretty much all next week. Details in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos, what's the latest? Uh, not a whole lot, Mike. <laughs> Let's get a look at the roadways right now. You can see 35 at South Cross, 35 at Ben Zingleman. Friday morning has been off to a decent start. You can see 1604 at Pat Booker. Just a few people getting by there, but keep in mind there's going to be some road work taking place a little bit later, so that will likely impact your drive time. Just make sure you pack your patience this morning, but right now make sure you also pack that joy because there's not a lot to really see that's going to cause problems. Problems. But let's start, start here with that wide look at the map because all, one thing you may encounter are stalled vehicles. We can see a few of them right there on our map uh, right now. That is the trending trouble for our drivers. So just make sure you're, you're careful out there and move over and slow down anytime you see those stalled vehicles. Let's take a look at those travel times. If you're going to be heading into San Antonio from any of these communities, it's still pretty pleasant from Pleasanton. 28 minutes on I-37 northbound. We're looking about 19 minutes from Highway 90 in those eastbound lanes. It's heading into West Loop. 1604 and right now your arrival from Lytle should be about a 16 minute drive time. Other than that, things are off to a decent start as I mentioned earlier, but we'll keep our eyes on the road and always make sure you do the same. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you. New this morning, a San Antonio police officer draws their weapon and shoots a suspect early this morning down on the southwest side. Chief William McManus says police were initially responding to a shots fired call just before 1.30 in the 4900 block of War Horse. When officers arrived, they say the driver of a red vehicle tried to leave the scene by backing up and crashing into officers' vehicles. The chief says that's when one of the officers fired a shot into the vehicle, hitting the suspect in the abdomen. He was taken to University Hospital and in into surgery. No word on his condition. Police are still investigating. New this morning, an 18 year old man in critical condition after being shot multiple times overnight. This happened in a 2000 block of Rowan Drive near West Shire, just east of Loop 410 on the city's west side. Now, people living in that area say they heard what sounded like fireworks going off. Once it stopped, residents went outside and one woman says she found the victim. I ran over there to, to help her and I heard his I heard a voice. So I followed it and found him on the ground and I started screaming for her, you know, he's over here. Right now police say they're looking at an unknown number of suspects who got away in a van or an SUV. None of them have been found. Also new this morning, we now know the name of a teen killed in a crash on Hausman Road west of I-10. The medical examiner's office saying he is Amir Abdal Rinha. The 17-year-old Brandeis High School student died when the black sedan he was a passenger in crashed into another car around 1230 yesterday. Four other students were in the car at the same time. Three were taken to a hospital. Another walked away with minor injuries. Two people in the other vehicle were also hospitalized. The medical examiner's office also releasing the name of a 13 year old killed on Wednesday. The teen is identified as Christopher Martinez. Police say Martinez was found inside a home on the north side of town in the 100 block of Agnes Drive near North Main where that shooting occurred. The ME says he died of a gunshot wound to the head. Detectives are still trying to determine what led up to that shooting and who is responsible. Today, Uvalde is remembering more of those lost in the school shooting that took place more 
than a week ago. A mass service for Jayla Nicole Siguero is scheduled for today at 10 a.m. at Sacred Heart. Services for J.C. Carmelo Luanabanos will be at the same time and place today. Jacqueline Gasares will also be remembered at a mass at 2 p.m. at Sacred Heart. Visitations for two other victims are set for today as well. We have that full schedule listed on our website at kset.com. And the Girl Scouts honoring one of the victims of the Uvalde School Massacre. Ten-year-old Amory Jo Garza died in that shooting after trying to use her phone to call authorities for help. The Girl Scouts have posthumously awarded Garza with a bronze cross, which is given for saving or attempting to save the lives of others and the risk of losing their own. It is one of the highest honors of that organization. Another revelation, the investigation into the Valley School shooting has developed. State Senator Roland Gutierrez says 911 calls made by children inside the elementary school were only sent to Uvalde City Police, not to Pete Arredondo, the school district police chief and commander on scene at the time. Arredondo has been criticized for his response that day. Senator Gutierrez says the Commission on State Emergency Communications told him Arredondo did not know about the calls. They call it a system failure on several levels, including with leadership at the legislative level. The mayor of Uvalde has said more mental health resources are needed, but went further this week by saying the gun issue also needs to be addressed. Well, President Biden amplifying his appeal to tighten gun restrictions in this country. The president addressing the nation Thursday night, one day after four people were shot and killed at an Oklahoma medical center. That latest deadly mass shooting as a congressional committee is advancing new gun legislation and bipartisan negotiations continue in the Senate. ABC's Justin Finch has more. President Biden addressing the nation after weeks of deadly mass shootings. My fellow Americans, enough. Behind the president, 56 candles, one for each U.S. state and territory touched by gun violence. New York State, Texas, and Oklahoma now among the latest. He says those victims' families want what families who suffered before them still want. For God's sake, do something. After Columbine, after Sandy Hook, after Charleston, after Orlando, after Las Vegas, after Parkland, nothing has been done. This time that can't be true. The president again calling for a ban on assault weapons and high capacity magazines and also pushing for passing enhanced background checks along with red flag and safe storage laws. This isn't about taking to anyone's rights. It's about protecting children. It's about protecting families. On Capitol Hill, a House committee approving a bill that would raise the age limit to 21 to buy semi-automatic rifles and tighten regulation of so-called ghost guns and bump stocks. And there are 18 eyes and 24 no's. Democrats and Republicans argued bitterly over their proposals for nearly 10 hours, with all Republicans on the committee voting no. Because I know that phone call. Parents across the country know that phone call. It's a sucker punch. It's a one-size-fits-all approach that punishes law-abiding citizens. That bill is up for a full vote in the House next week, but has little chance of passing in the Senate. On the Senate side, bipartisan talks continue with momentum growing on policies that could earn support from both parties, though details are limited. As those talks continue, three students from that Texas school shooting are being laid to rest today. And in New York State, 10 new gun measures passed, including one raising the purchase age to 21 for AR-15 style rifles. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 612, 76 degrees. And still to come on GMSA EA Sports, out with a new preview for NFL Madden 23. We're going to tell you how the company is honoring the late NFL great John Madden. But coming up right after the break, good old Texas brisket on some tips on how you can get that perfect uh, crust and flavor the next time you try to smoke a brisket at home. And taking a look outside with a live cam, it's the good old heat again today and all weekend long and next week as well. We are back to what we know here in San Antonio. Meanwhile, we have a beautiful shot outside there with live cam. We'll be right back. Welcome back 616. Quite intentionally, we have scheduled a barbecue related story just before Father's Day and the official start of summer. 
Our focus, smoking brisket. Whether you're a novice or somewhat experienced brisket person, you can now raise your game, so to speak. We've, I've already taken two classes at Brisket U, as in university. They hold weekend classes at local breweries. They teach you how to trim a brisket, pick the right firewood, how to wrap it, and carve it when it's done. The classes make great gifts. It can help give you brisket bragging rights. So again, we created this so that, you know, when your neighbor or your brother-in-law is looking over your shoulder telling you you're doing it wrong, you can say, hey, back off, I'm certified. All right, learn more about Brisket U coming up on GMSA at 9 and later this morning on KSAT.com. What a great way to spend a weekend, right? I, Beer and brisket? Yes, I think that's a, probably a perfect Father's Day present. It is there. a win-win situation. Time now, 617. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I'm just waiting for Mark to now invite us over to his house. No, for, uh, I mean, right? What's going on? What is going on, Mark? I don't have an answer for you. Well, <laughs> you know what? We're going to have to tune to GMSA at 9 to find out what's yes, going sir. on, right? <laughs> well, if you'd like to know what's going on, Going on on the roadways. Let's get that look around town. You can see things are fine just right there. 281 at jo uh, Jones Maltzberger. Traffic has been off to a decent start as we're getting ready to drive off into the weekend, but you can see it's getting a little bit busier as we are inching closer to that morning rush hour. So just remember to be careful out there. Uh, as we get that wide look at the map, you can see there really isn't anything to talk about in terms of what's happening here in town. This is new though. This crash up in Bernie, I hadn't seen that before. So I'll look at that a little bit later on, find out how that's impacting the drive time. We know that there was a crash that was reported near State Highway 46 that had cleared out. So again, we'll have to find out what's going on there, but uh, make sure that you plan ahead for your weekend commute because here off I-10 on the far east side of San Antonio, there will be some bridge work taking place. This starts today, Friday, June 3rd, and should be wrapping up on Saturday, June 4th. Keep in mind that will be from 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning. There you'll see a full main lane closure in both directions from FM 1518 to FM 1516. So again, plan that commute and we'll keep you updated. Just head over to ksat.com slash traffic for the very latest. Make sure to scroll down to the bottom of the page to find those closures. Guys, thank right, you. So Steve. let's recap here. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Taking classes on how to cook brisket. Mm -hmm. Yes. You've cooked brisket. Yeah, several times. Ah. And what have you done with that brisket? That's oh I've eaten it. Hmm. He brought some in the morning one Wait, time. When? It's well, been yeah, a while. Yeah. We didn't get any. I gave a sample. You yeah, had some. Uh -huh. Kevin had had some. Yeah. I get. I had. I had. Yeah. yeah I had, like in a foil. There wasn't a ton yeah. left, but I, I brought it. I need to bring in another sample. I get your <laughs> you point. Had some, you had some. Maybe you were off that day. Mike and I left out. Glasses and I are crossing. You the guys here yeah. looking at each other right now. It's like you, what? I wouldn't deprive you. I'm sure you guys weren't here that day. <laughs> Next time. Next time. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Stephen was actually planning on getting you a gift. Yeah, oh. Father's Day is not now. So. <laughs> uh, temperatures right now, uh, we've got 77 degrees. Number-wise, on this graphic, looks a lot like it did the past couple of days, but we do have some lower humidity out there, so uh, that's a little bit more pleasant, or I should say maybe not pleasant, but not as humid, obviously. 67 is the dew point as compared to the low 70s that we had the past few days. Wind is out of the northeast, so we had that little bit of a front moving on through here, and that pulled in some dry air, kind of pushed the humidity out temporarily. All right, this is a great great picture yesterday. Some of those big storm clouds that were billowing up and boy, it's a beautiful picture and underneath them. It was a beautiful picture too. I assume with uh, some of the rain that you got. Now this is going to be the situation again today where you may be seeing most of us are going to be looking at the clouds off in the distance. Some of the rain clouds instead of having them right on top of us. Plenty of clouds right now. Uh, a couple of breaks here and there. We'll keep these clouds around throughout the morning. As far as any mist, there's that possibility. Kind of doubt it, though. All these dew points are well down into the 60s, mid and upper 60s, as opposed to low to mid 70s like we have been. A little more humid down around uh, Poteet and further on down to the, the southeast. Dew points are down. Two, three, four, five degrees, seven degrees in New Valley compared to this time yesterday. So it's that much drier. air. It doesn't seem like a whole lot, but one or two degrees, uh, say when you have dew points as high, one or two degrees does make a big difference in both directions. So we're going to be in the upper 70s, low 80s throughout the rest of the morning. I've got the 10% in there, maybe a sprinkle. I kind of doubt it, but just don't be surprised by one or two of them. 88 at noon and getting up into the low 90s. Then we'll top off at 95 later on today. 20% chance for a few showers and thunderstorms. Again, I think most of us are going to be looking at the big clouds off in the distance instead of having them on top of us with some of that rain. This is what the computer model is indicating. Some sunshine thrown into the clouds later on today. And then by dinner time, early evening, we start to see some of the thunderstorms developing around the area. 
if you get one of these storms, could have a decent brief shower. So look forward to that. It's not going to be any sort of a drought breaker, of course. This is going to last into the evening hours and uh, maybe even a straggler out there in the hill country later on tonight. Then tomorrow morning in the overnight hours, we're going to have to watch to see if indeed this big storm, one of those nighttime storm complexes likes to or wants to develop and that will be the case into the early morning hours with uh, perhaps a couple of those thunderstorms and that'd be dying down once the uh, the sun pretty much comes up and then uh, get ready for the heat after that because it is definitely going to be a sizzler tomorrow afternoon all the way through next week. 88 at noon today, partly cloudy skies. High temperatures are going to make it up to 95. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms here and there, only a roughly a 20% chance for some rain. Tomorrow, we'll have to watch out for some of those storms in the early morning hours, especially in parts of the hill country. And then after that, lots of sunshine, lots of heat with temperatures. Well, the top numbers, the little ones there are the record high temperatures for those specific dates. So we're going to be real close to uh, hitting some records around here. <laughs> I think that goes without saying, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, not, not not the records we want. Yeah, but string okay. a string of triple digits. We've already hit it officially here in town, about a handful of times so far. But we're going to be adding to that next week. Okay, thank you, Mike. Six twenty-two, about seventy-six degrees. Coming up next, find out what flying cows have to do with cell phones and disaster areas. We're going to explain in Tech Bites. This is the story of two homes. They both have bugs. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> But only one has Zevo. Bother the bugs. Oh, oh. Not your family. Zevo is made with essential oils, which attack bugs' biological systems. So Zevo gets rid of the bugs, plus is safe for use around people and pets. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. If you have diabetes, it's important to have confidence in the nutritional drink you choose. Try Boost Glucose Control. It's clinically shown to help manage blood sugar levels and contains high quality protein to help manage hunger and support muscle health. Try Boost today. In today's Tech Bytes, Instagram Reels are getting new editing features in an effort to keep up with TikTok. Meta allowing longer Reels up to 90 seconds. Users will also be able to import their own audio and they'll have the ability to push videos into Facebook feeds. AT&T upgrading its flying cows and they're not animals. That's shorthand for flying cells on wings. The drones are used to bring 5G into disaster areas. The upgrades will increase the chance users will receive important messages when regular mobile networks fail. EA Sports out with a new preview for NFL Madden 23. The new video game will feature three different covers. Legendary Football Hall of Famer John Madden from stints as coach, broadcaster, and video game icon. The trailer debuts today on YouTube. The game is coming out in the month of August. Time now, 626 and 76 degrees for now. A local girl wins the National Spelling Bee. That's coming up the next half hour of GMSA. And a heavy law enforcement presence in Jordanton at this hour after an escaped inmate engages officers. That inmate now dead. Katrina Weber will join us live with more on that investigation. And trans guide right now. A couple of vehicles out there on the side of the road. 410 at Cherry Ridge. We'll be right back. It is a Friday morning. You're waking up watching GMSA. Weather and traffic are coming up. But first. Our top story this morning, a statewide manhunt for a convicted murderer has ended very close to San Antonio down in Jordanton. That escaped inmate, 46-year-old Gonzalo Lopez, killed during a shootout with law enforcement officers late last night. Katrina Weber is live where it ended in the middle of a Jordanton neighborhood. And Katrina, that had to be frightening for people who live there. Now, one woman described to us waking up to the sound of a gunshot and then being told frantically by a relative who happens to be in law enforcement to stay inside her home. Now, what happened outside here ended with the death of that suspect, that suspect the uh, convicted murderer, Gonzalo Lopez. And up until just a few minutes ago, we had a pretty active crime scene out here. According to the Atascosa County Sheriff, local law enforcement officers had received an alert about the escape 
escaped murderer Gonzalo Lopez being in this area. He also had deputies watching the highway for a stolen truck that Lopez was said to be driving. When they spotted that truck last night, he says deputies began to follow him. Jordanton police, meanwhile, had put down spike strips, which Lopez ran over, flattening all his tires. The sheriff says after that, things took an even more violent turn. The suspect stuck a rifle out of the window of the truck and fired several shots. He turned on this street here, which is Cyprus. He went down there and struck a telephone pole. The sheriff says Lopez then got out of the truck and got into a gun battle with the officers, and that is when he was shot and killed. Now, investigators say prior to this, Lopez had killed four people, including three children. That was in the town of Centerville in central, east central Texas, about 250 miles away from here. He says that he broke into that home, killed the people, and then stole that pickup, which he drove to this location. Now, Lopez, who was serving life for capital murder, had escaped from a prison bus back on May 12th in Centerville, not far from the home, where he then allegedly killed those four people yesterday. Reporting live in Jordanton, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you very much, Katrina. Good morning, everyone. And uh, there's our morning clouds hanging around here. Difference is, though, we don't have quite as much humidity. It's still very warm, 77, still well above normal. That number, though, dew point, measure moisture is down about, uh, what, three, four, five degrees compared to the past couple of mornings, thanks to wind that has shifted around out of the northeast. We had a weak front that moved on through here, so that brought in some of that drier air, and pretty much everybody in the metropolitan area is enjoying lower humidity as compared to the past uh, couple of days. Molds on the moderate side. The updated count is going to come on in about uh, an hour or so. You know, I can't completely rule out a stray sprinkle this morning. Kind of doubt it, especially down to the southeast. There could be one or two of them. And then later on today, a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms like what we had yesterday. Most everybody's not going to be seeing rain, but at least there will be one or two of them out there. We're we'll also going to have to keep an eye out for a storm complex to develop northwest of the hill country overnight and maybe into early tomorrow morning. And then after that, it's just going to be hot and then staying hot all the way through the rest of next week with a big long stretch of triple digit temperatures, maybe uh, breaking, or at least tying some of the uh, record high temperatures going into next week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos, what's the latest? Hey, good morning, Mike. We'll check out what's going on here at 410 at Cherry Ridge. We showed you this as we went to commercial break. These are reported as stalled vehicles out in that direction. Earlier, we had mentioned this on the map, and you can see there from that TransGuide camera, this does look like it involves two vehicles. Hopefully, the drivers are okay, but uh, it doesn't look like it's causing any issues for the drivers that are heading in that direction. Just remember when you see a situation like this, you got to slow down a little bit. Make sure to also move over. Give them plenty of time and plenty of room. Uh, thankfully, as we get a look at the map, no other issues to talk about just yet. But of course, we see a lot of those little construction zones. So you got to make sure that you plan your commute, especially as we drive off into the weekend. Now, if your destination is going to be the Alamo City, well, we have those travel times for you right now. Everything is looking pretty good. But again, those usual slowdowns, gosh, off to it. 28 minutes. It's not looking bad, but you got to remember that we're going to see that for some time, especially as we're getting closer to that morning rush hour because of the construction that's taking place up there. So just remember to pack your patience if you're heading on 281 southbound. But other than that, things are green across the board, but we'll continue to watch the roads closely, especially in areas like this 410 at Cherry Ridge. We'll have more updates on your Friday morning commute coming up a little bit later on. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, police say two people are expected to be okay after they crash their vehicles into each other on the northwest side. This happened at Loop 410 and Vance Jackson just before 1230. Police say the two vehicles collided on Loop 410. One of the vehicles spun off onto the access road while the other rolled into the main lanes. The driver in the vehicle that rolled into the main lanes was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. The other driver, police say, appeared unharmed. Today marks 100 days since Russia's invasion of Ukraine began. So far, Ukraine is holding on and has the support of the United States and NATO. CNN's John Lawrence reports. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, in an address Thursday, thanked the U.S. for sending high-mobility artillery rocket systems to his country, saying they will, quote, help save the lives of our people and protect our land. President Biden's goal, the whole U.S. government's goal, Congress's goal is to support Ukraine and help Ukraine uh, ultimately prevail. 
In addition to weaponry, the Biden administration also announced another round of sanctions against government officials and others close to Russian President Vladimir Putin. The cumulative toll of uh, every measure we have put in place uh, has been extraordinarily uh, biting on the Russian economy. The White House released a statement saying these sanctions are designed to, quote, enhance enforcement and increase pressure on Putin and his enablers. Our goal in all of this is to do everything we can to bring this war to an end, uh, to diminish the violence uh, and to put an end uh, to a conflict that was needless to begin with. Since the start of the war, President Biden has been talking with other world leaders to develop a coordinated response. The United States is leading the efforts uh, to provide support to Ukraine. And uh, uh, NATO allies and the United States are uh, providing an uh, unprecedented level of military support. This is making a difference on the battlefield every day. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Dwindling Social Security payments could be less than 15 years away. In their annual report, Social Security and Medicare trustees said Americans will stop getting full Social Security benefits in about 13 years if Congress doesn't act. The combined Social Security trust funds, which help support payouts for the elderly and disabled, are projected to run dry in 2035. The outlook is even worse for Medicare. Its hospital insurance trust fund, known as Medicare Part A, will only be able to pay scheduled benefits until 2028. Medicare will then cover 90% of total benefits. Businesses across the U.S. keep hiring employees despite higher costs and a potential recession. The closely watched monthly employment report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics is due out in a matter of hours. Economists expect the report to say some 350,000 jobs were added last month when an unemployment rate of 3.5 percent. That would be a new pandemic era low. The labor market has nearly recovered to its pre-pandemic strength with, in the U.S. with just 1.2 million jobs short of where it was before the shutdowns began. An eighth grader from San Antonio has won the Scripps National Spelling Bee. Harini Logan won in the Bee's first ever lightning round tiebreaker. So both spellers got four words wrong during their grueling showdown before Scripps went to the 90-second spell off. Harini was faster and sharper throughout spelling 21 words correctly to take the win. She will be bringing home a trophy and more than $50,000 in cash and prizes. Harini was a four-time participant in the B and a sentimental favorite for who endured the pandemic to compete again in person for the first time since 2019. And Mayor Ron Nirenberg tweeted out his congratulations saying, quote, huge congratulations to the 2022 Scripps National Spelling Bee champion, Harini Logan. Harini is the first San Antonio student to advance to the final round in the history of Scripps Bee. Way to represent our city. Congratulations, Harini. Right now, 639, about 76 degrees. And coming up, our great graduate series continues with a South San ISD senior whose fearlessness and work ethic are reflected in her academic success. We're going to introduce you to her next. Welcome back on your Friday morning, just about 643. We know graduating from high school is a tremendous milestone. That's one reason why continue to highlight the success and triumphs of so many graduating high school and college seniors around San Antonio. And our Jonathan Cotto walked the halls of South San Antonio High School with one of their most promising students and tells us why Michaela Molina is setting the standard high. Michaela Molina is described as one of the kindest, most compassionate students at South San. Her fearlessness and work ethic is reflected in her academic success. And she credits her drive to do better, be better, to a very key figure in her family. My grandpa, before my grandpa had passed, I saw, like, I always wanted to, like, show him everything, all my report cards, all my grades, all my A's. And I just felt like he was very proud of me, and he was the one that really kept me focused. Molina and her little brother forced to navigate the challenges of virtual learning during the pandemic, taking on other roles while her parents maintained a 9 to 5. She says balancing the difficulties of the public health crisis and just being a teenager through it all was not easy whatsoever. I had to step up and help them with virtual learning and also in the process my grandma had found out that she had cancer. So during the learning I had to also take her and drive her to her appointments and while I was in class. And it was just very challenging because I did step up. My mom did work at home but she couldn't 
step away because honestly work is very demanding. So I had to take care as my grandma is her health care provider and a teacher and parent to my brother. Paulina's had her priorities in order despite the circumstances and has successfully overcome what others may see as obstacles or roadblocks. And just when you think there isn't enough hours in a day, Molina has volunteered over 350 hours as a member of the National Honor Society. She will be the first in her family to attend college and has been accepted to Texas A&M Corpus Christi, where she plans to major in biomedical. My words for Michaela are this, always be you. Don't ever, ever, ever try to meet someone else's expectations. Be you, be proud of who you are, accept who you are, because you've made it this far. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And congrats to Michaela again. I agree. Uh, 6.45 right now. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Things are fine over here. So we're going to try to keep this short. You can see there at 37 at Houston, things are off. People are moving. It is morning rush hour, so just remember to be careful out there. You can see US 90 at 35. We can probably expect some more traffic before the show wraps up, but right now things are fine. You can see some active construction spots. And as a quick reminder, if you have to drive through Wurzbach Parkway, I saw this the other day, some island work taking place. This is current up until today, but we know there's a ton of work taking place out there at Wurzbach from 9 in the morning to four in the afternoon. As a reminder, single westbound lane closure at the Lock Hill Selma Road intersection. I saw this the other day. A lot of folks were forgetting to move over to the other lane and there are plenty of digital signs out there warning drivers. So make sure you plan ahead. We have that information, of course, on our website at ksat.com slash traffic. Just remember to scroll to the bottom of the page. Things are fine over here, guys. Very good. I have a task for you, Mr. Austin. For, mm. for me? Okay. <laughs> Open up your phone, get Google here and okay. I'm ready. What you got? Lyrics to a song. It looks like I see the moon. The moon sees me down through the leaves of the old oak tree. Sing it, Frank. I assume talking about Frank Sinatra. That's what I would have seen. I, it's got to be, right? I mean, who else would it be? I don't think it's Frank Zappa. So. Frankie um, Avalon? I mean. So uh, look that up. See what's going oh, on here. Okay. okay. All right. Thank I'm you very go. much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. I'm on it. The waxing crescent moon is going to be full in um, just under two weeks, about uh, 11 days or so, on the 14th of June, of course, which is Flag Day. Sun is coming up. Still got some of our uh, clouds hanging around here. We're going to see more sunshine mixed in later on today. I put a, you know, there's a 10% on here, especially down to the southeast, as far as a sprinkler or two is possible. Not very likely this morning. We're going to make it into the uh, low to mid 80s throughout the rest of the morning with some sunshine mixed in with the clouds, 88 at noon, and then getting up into the mid 90s later on. So the normal high temperature, average high, is 91. We're going to be above that again today, although yesterday we did stay at 95 as expected, and we're going to be at 95 today. And then there's that 20% chance for a few stray showers or even a thunderstorm or two. They're going to be kind of scattered about the area. Which again, this computer model shows that by late afternoon, one or two of those going to be popping up around here. They're going to be going on through dinner time and then into the early evening hours. Still, just a couple of those uh, showers, thunderstorms will be kind of hanging around the area. Most of us are just going to be seeing them off at a distance and won't get any uh, of the, the rain from it. And if you do get one of those thunderstorms, you could have a, a decent shower here or there. Then this model in particular wants to fire up a one of those nighttime storm complexes well off there in northwest portions of the hill country and then work its way down through here in the overnight early morning hours. So that'll be something if this indeed does develop, have to keep an eye out for in the early morning hours tomorrow. And that will be dying down just right around sunrise. Then after that, we're going to have just a bunch of sunshine around here. All right, tropics very quickly. You know, we've been watching the leftovers of Agatha, which moved across Central America, Southern Mexico. It has moved into the open waters now off the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula and the Hurricane Center is eyeballing that and it has it moving across. It has it becoming Tropical Storm Alex. It is a potential tropical depression right now, so officially not technically not anything yet, just a low down there, but it's still looking like it's going to be working its way across Florida and it's going to be a big rain producer for the uh, southern half of Florida. So the forecast for us today 88 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 95. One or two of those showers and thunderstorms will be popping up later on this afternoon. Again, few and far between. Keep an eye out whether that nighttime storm complex decides to develop overnight tonight and early tomorrow morning. And then after that, it's just going to be hot. Triple digit temperatures all the way through next week. 
Um, about 10 degrees above normal on average, close to record highs each and every day. All right, this was a tough one, Mike. Um, I'm, I'm finding lyrics from, from one thing, uh, the, a group called the Mariners called I See the Moon. A couple of them. And then the Stargazers, but uh, no references directly to Mr. Sinatra. Yeah, okay? there's one that came oh. up with Mr. Sinatra is like, fly me to the moon. But, right, yeah. right, but right, right. I haven't right. seen if, if those lyrics I, were in there. Yeah, so if, if <laughs> whoever sent it to us, if you, if you have more info, let us know, because right now we're we're grasping at straws. Or hum a few and bars. <laughs> and also, uh, Nancy Sinatra, I see the moon. There you go. So, okay, you know, maybe, maybe yeah. that was it. Maybe. 650, about 76 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, setting and achieving her goals is what one Lanier High School senior has been doing her entire school career. Now she's poised to start college with her sights set on the stars. We're going to share her story tomorrow. Outside with Live Cam, we'll wrap up GMSA after the break. Good morning, America. Coming up on this Friday morning, President Biden's address to the nation last night. Now he called for Congress to take action on gun safety measures. After the latest round of deadly shootings this morning, a reality check on what Congress could actually do. And tracking the next tropical threat. We're live in Florida for that. Could be a big rain event for South Florida. Plus, we're live in London for day two of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. Now, she's skipping out on the big festivities of the day, so we'll have the latest on her health and also all the festivities. That's coming up right here on GMA. The search for an inmate who escaped from authorities about 250 miles away from here has ended here in Jordanton. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That convicted murderer, 46-year-old Gonzalo Lopez, was killed in a shootout with law enforcement officers. Now, according to the Atascosa County Sheriff, deputies had been watching the highways for a stolen pickup that this suspect was believed to be driving. They spotted the truck late last night and began following it. The sheriff says once Lopez reached the Jordanton area, he ran over spike strips that police had put down, flattening all his tires. He says Lopez then began firing a rifle, crashed that truck, got out, and got into a gun battle with officers who shot and killed him. Hours before all this happened, investigators say Lopez killed a family in Centerville in East Central Texas. They say he broke into the home, killed them, and then stole the pickup, which he drove to this location. Now, Lopez was already serving a life sentence for capital murder when he escaped from a prison bus back on May 12th. Reporting from Jordanton, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Five till seven. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend, and they're going to have a lot to look forward to if they have to head out the door in the next few moments. But be on the lookout because it is morning rush, and we will see some slowdowns out there. But right now, our map not picking that up just yet. But keep in mind, drivers, 281 southbound, the usual slowdown if you're heading in from Bulverde and those southbound lanes from 281. Other than that, it is green across the board. You can see there, no trouble getting into the San Antonio area. One last look there at Transguide 604 at Spurs Ranch. The morning is up. People are moving. SPF might be a good idea, right? Mike? Oh, definitely. Any day, it, it's yeah. a very good idea. We've got our morning clouds hanging around here. Temperature 76. We have dropped down a couple of more degrees, even 69 right now. Comfort drier air is in place this morning just compared to the past couple of days. 88 at noon, 95 high temperature, a couple of uh, stray showers or a thunderstorm or two. We'll have to watch out for a complex developing overnight tonight, early tomorrow morning. Then it is just going to be blazing hot. Lots of triple digits. Yeah, we already had a a row of triple digits back. Yeah, we've had a, a couple of days in a row here and there, but this is going to be just a nice long stretch we're, right we're now. We're supposed to be used to it by now, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. We should be. Should be. Okay. <laughs> have a good have weekend, a, guys. Yeah, have a very good weekend. We'll see you back here at 9.